Hello, how are you? The title of today's video is My first simple bootloader. Have you ever been curious about how your computer starts booting after you press the power button? I was always curious about it, so I started digging into Linux kernel code and its related bootloader called Grub2 or Grand Unified Bootloader version 2. In this video, I will show what I have learned about this initial process, focus on creating a simple bootloader to demo the basic concept behind it. First, let's take a look at some related information on 8086 microprocessor-based computer. As soon as the power button is pressed, assuming the power supply meets the requirement of so-called power good signal, a pulse is sent to CPU to start a chain of actions. First, as part of post or power on self-test, all registers are set to zero, including instruction register IP, except code segment register CS, which is set to hex FFFF. BIOS or basic input and output system is loaded at CS equals hex FFFF and IP offset at zero with 20 address lines. The real mode memory size is 2 to the power of 20, or 1 megabytes. By left shifting CS by 4 bits, the BIOS entry address is hex FFFF0. As the last step of BIOS loading, the entry address is checked to see if it is empty. If yes, the booting process stops. If not, BIOS will start loading MBR or Master Boot Record. MBR is also known as bootloader. Here are some details. BIOS initiates interrupt hex 19 routine. We can think interrupts in assembly as a function in C language. It invokes service program at hex E6 F2 to load MBR from site 0, track 0, section 1 on bootable device. For example, floppy disk, USB, or hard drive, which is exactly 512 bytes. The target address is hex 7C00. These 512 bytes are ended with magic number hex 55AA. This is the only way to tell the BIOS. This chunk of code is bootable. The takeaway from this procedure is four pieces of information that are useful when we create a simple bootloader. First, bootloader or MBR master boot record is in 16-bit memory mode. Second, the entry address for bootloader is hex 7C00. Third, the magic number at the end of bootloader must be hex 55 AA. Fourth, the size of bootloader is exactly 512 bytes. Next, we need to set up development environment. My computer is running Windows 10 operating system. To use Linux Assembler to compile and build the bootloader code, I installed Ubuntu in VirtualBox. It's a relatively straightforward process. You can find many resources online to explain how to do it. 
or you may be running Linux on your machine at this moment. So it would be redundant for me to explain how to set up a Linux system. To test my first bootloader binary, I installed QEMU in Linux, a single command in Ubuntu terminal will accomplish this installation. sudo apt-get install qemu. To write bootloader assembly code, I use Visual Studio code. You can use any text editor. There are only two steps to install Visual Studio code. First, download the file with extension deb or deb package for Ubuntu from Microsoft Visual Studio website. Then run Ubuntu package manager command dpkg. For example, sudo dpkg slash i and the file name with deb extension. Now I will start my dev machine to demo how to create and test a simple bootloader in Linux. Open VirtualBox. Select Ubuntu Virtual Machine. Log in. Run Visual Studio Code from terminal by typing code. Click Open Folder. Create a folder. Then create a new file called boot.s. Let me first explain the initial assembly code I'm going to write to test if QEMU is working as expected. By the way, I'm going to use GNU Assembler, also known as GAS, G-A-S. It's using AT&T syntax. It's also used by GRUB2 and Linux kernel. The first line is to define 16-bit mode, then declare the starting point with global keyword for the label demo, which is visible to linker. The convention is to use start. For demo purpose, I use a different label name. In real development, I would follow the convention. Next, implement the label code. Here, it is quite simple. Just two lines of code. We use jump instruction to create an infinite loop. As mentioned before, the size of the bootloader has to be exactly 512 bytes, and the last two bytes are magic numbers. So we use directive fill to add zeros to 510 bytes long. The syntax is count of bytes, size of values, and the value itself. To calculate the byte count of zeros needed, subtract 510 from the difference between the current position and the label demo position. Here, dot inside the parentheses indicates current position. I think the description is harder to understand than you just look at the expression itself. 510 minus parentheses dot minus demo. At the end, don't forget to add the magic word hex 55AA. Uh, wait. Why I swap to hex AA55 in the code? The reason is that X 
86 processors use little endian as order of bytes in memory. That's all the code we are going to write initially. Let me quickly type them into boot.s source file. There are only six lines of code. You can pause the video if you plan to follow along. When you finish coding, save to boot.s file. You can choose any file name, but it would be easier to use the default one, since it will be used in the following commands. Go to terminal and list the files. The size of boot.s is around 80 bytes long. Compile it into boot.o object file with GNU assembler or guess. as-o boot.o boot.s List the files again. The object file is 1200 bytes, much bigger than 512 bytes that can fit into boot sector. It's not a final bootloader binary. We will use linker to build the final boot.bin file from boot.o with binary format. We also need to specify demo label as the starting point. It's important to indicate the bootloader should be saved to hex 7c00 MBR entry address. List the files. You can see boot.bin is exactly 512 bytes. Now let's call QEMU to load our bootloader with option drive file equals boot.bin format equals raw. Optionally, we can specify index equals zero, media equals disk. Press enter. The QEMU window shows up. It says booting from hard disk. Cheers. Our first bootloader is working, although it doesn't really do anything. If you are careful, you may have noticed a warning message under QEMU command. TCG doesn't support requested feature. The possible reason could be that I'm running Ubuntu in VirtualBox as virtual machine, then executing QEMU virtual machine on top of Ubuntu. And I'm also not running KVM kernel-based virtual machine, which forces QEMU to use tiny code generator or TCG. By the way, it's not possible to run QEMU without KVM and without TCG. If anyone knows how to fix this TCG related warning, please drop a note in the comment area. For now, it doesn't prevent us from testing our simple bootloader. How about displaying a message to prove that our bootloader can actually do something? The message will be hello world. This is my first bootloader. It's defined with ASCII Z, which will put zero at the end to terminate the string. We will modify the main body of the code. Load address of message into special register SI and move function number hex E for interrupt hex 10 into register AH or high byte of register A. Then in the loop with label print message, we load the byte pointed by register SI into AL or low byte of register A with load SB. It will automatically increment register SI. 
If content of register AL is zero, then jump to label finish. If not, call interrupt hex ten. It will execute function hex e in register AH, which will print character in register AL to screen. Repeat this process by jumping back to label print message. In label finish, we use halt to pause the bootloader. I will add these twelve lines of code into boot.s file. You can pause the video and try yourself. When you finish typing, we will go through the same procedure to compile and link the assembly code into final bootloader binary. Switch to terminal. Run assembler to compile source code to object code. By the way, you can use Control plus R to quickly search through the command history reversely. Run linker to create bootloader binary file. Make sure it's created. Finally, use qemu command to run or modify bootloader. The message shows up. It says, "Hello world, this is my first bootloader." Happy ending. In summary, we have created a bootloader in less than twenty lines of assembly code. Eighteen exactly, six in the initial code, twelve more in the improved version to display a message. The practical bootloaders like Grub2 or Grand Unified Bootloader Version 2 is much more complicated, but they all have to follow the fundamental rules, like. 512 bytes size limitation of MBR or master boot record. Entry address at hex 7C00, end with magic number hex 55AA. Operates in 16-bit real memory address mode. This is a brief introduction to a simple bootloader. I skipped detailed explanation of assembly instructions used in the code, since there are plenty of resources online to provide the detailed descriptions. Hopefully, you have learned something useful here. Thanks for watching.